We've experimented a lot with the small space living and that sense of wonder when you come in. This idea of how you can really change a space with a very, very simple elements, suddenly it feels very transformed and different. I'm Nina Tonstrup, uh, part of Studio Mama. Based... And I'm Jack Mama. Okay. The other half of Studio Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Our idea was to explore how to create a transformative space where you can subdivide that with sliding door elements that could create different zones within the space. If you're a fan of this Never Too Small episode, our new book is perfect for you. Discover our top 30 small footprint homes, available at the Never Too Small store. So the flat is located in Islington, it's the north part of London. It's a very central location, very beautiful streets lined with big trees, you know, which gives that kind of nearly a, a suburbia feel or not being that central in London as you actually are. This is a lower ground floor flat in a terraced Victorian house. I went to see the, the flat and it was really a maze of walls and really run down. So the challenge was basically how do we make this feel light and open. So it's a lot to try and squeeze in to a, a fairly small space and then also feel that it's actually spacious. When I first entered the flat, there was one living room that had a narrow kitchen and then there was a master bedroom that took basically the best view to the garden. The new floor plan that we created was very much about opening up the space so we could connect the front of the flat to the back of the flat because that's where we have the, the window. Converted what was two bedrooms that was in the front of the flat towards the garden to being topped at the entrance, and then we moved the kitchen on the other side. So the kitchen obviously has a totally different location. We got a separate entrance where you come in and you walk down the stairs in a little forecourt. So in that way, you you are kind of feeling that it's really a, your own little space here. So when you enter, the first thing you have is a bench on to take your shoes on and off. There's loads of storage space for your overcoats and shoes. We did a lot of work with that, you know, how much space do we need for it to feel generous? And then the first thing when you turn in is this really big bookshelf. It feels really generous when you enter the space. The bookshelf was built around an old fireplace and then we used the opportunity to put in a big mirror. We work a lot with mirror in, in small spaces as in the evening it can also give this very sculptural feel to the space. The mirror actually helps to bounce the light and also help amplify the sense of space upon entering the main area, area when you come in. We thought about the layout of the study a lot so that it connects to the sofa space. The desk is facing outwards to the garden so you feel connected to the outside. We also incorporated the standing working possibility that you can switch easily between sitting and standing. The study space needs and storage all built in Douglas fir. That gives that kind of a whole different sensibility and warmth when you sit in that space. When you get through to the garden side of the flat, we wanted to create both living room space and a dining space. There's not that many square meters to get all that squeezed in. And the sofa is designed to visually take up as little space as possible, but obviously maximize the seating. So one of the things we did was to make it as floating as possible. So that's cantily when the sofa, we gained that extra visual sense of space. We designed the coffee table because again, it's, the space is not so big. 
the armrest also serves as a side table as well, so you can leave your book or a cup of tea. The ceiling in the study and the living area is lower than the rest of the flat. We actually used it as a feature because there's something really quite cosy. You get the feel that the space opens up in front of you. And then you see the garden and the light. You have this garden that comes with the lower ground floor flat here, which I think is a massive plus for the flat. This is a beautiful mature garden um, where we have big trees that you would see and the tree also makes the space really green when you look through. So we had this challenge with the kitchen that we have a big structural column that we have to work around. We created these two areas around the column. We wanted to create this kind of a graphic feel to the kitchen. So the kitchen comprised fridge, freezer, dishwasher, oven. We had to find a way to have drawers for knives and forks and all of that. And uh, that we put in in the curb end. So it, that was the only space left. So we managed to kind of squeeze it in and make it a feature for the kitchen. The light for the kitchen is integrated LED lights onto the cabinet so that is uh, motion sensors. The material that we have used for the workshop and the splash bag, the material made with off-cut wood. So it was important that we also had the material that worked both for the workshop and the splash bag. That kind of a continuous line always gives more openness. We really like to have some open shelving, but it also makes access very easy and give that openness. The dining table was within an narrow confine, so we came up with this idea of this more diamond-shaped table. That takes up much less footprint so that you could easily have the chairs tucked in and be able to pass through to the other side of it. It had a recess so that we could integrate a bench into it. We found these Swiss designed dining chairs by Bruno Ray. This shape is nice because you're facing each other, which I think is quite nice and more convivial. For the first sleeping pot, in the front of the pot, we had to integrate some stairs for accessing the pot. The first pot has sliding doors, and it also gives a sense of privacy. It's quite cozy when you're in there. And on the top of the pot, we integrated a glass box that gives light from the front of the flats. There is also some shelving that can be used for books and etc. In the front of the pot, there's pull-out storage. One thing that I was quite conscious about is having two sleeping pots up against each other. So they're separated by a big sliding door, which um, gives that kind of a movement in the space. Just gives that sense of you have a, a space that can be divided up. And it creates privacy between the two pots. So the second pod was at a lower level. There's a sliding door to close it off for privacy. On the other side of the pod are a sliding door element. So there's an opportunity to play with the openness of the space. What's not visible to people is that the top part is in two halves. So you have storage from the outside, but also from the inside of the pod. We managed to integrate some storage under the bed. We have quite vivid colours inside the wardrobe, it's quite bright yellow. The other wardrobe is quite bright blue. We like to have a colours, but we also, it's that balance of that, the, the colours really has to fit in and not take over the space. We wanted to keep the sight line of the front and the back of the space very open. So the bathroom is quite narrow, kind of glass above, so it has a nice light intake. We've used this idea of framing things very much in this project. We are used to micro cement and one can customise the colours. The bathroom is in a light blue. We have the same material on the floor and the walls. It also makes the space feel bigger because it's less boundary visually. I think that's something that's very nice about this space that we've created here.
and it's difficult to put into words, but it's the feel of it when you walk in. Maybe it's the, to do with the combination of, of, of natural materials and colours that we've used and the way that we've worked with the layout and, and so on. The thing that we often work with smaller spaces is that aha, when you come from quite a confined entrance and you get into a space that opens up. Thanks for watching. And if you're an architect or designer with a project we could feature, please share it with us at nevertoosmall.com slash submissions.